Creative Media in the College of Communication and Information Sciences. Welcome to the Fall 2020 NANSAPO Ceremony sponsored by the Black Faculty and Staff Association here at the University of Alabama. Today, we are all about doing three things. We wanna celebrate, we want to salute, and we want to challenge. We are celebrating the fact that you are completing a bachelor's, master's, specialist, PhD, EDD, many different degrees this week, but not just that you are individually making that accomplishment this week. Collectively, more than 300 African Americans are following in the footsteps of Vivian Malone, James Hood, Authorine Lucy, Myron Pope, Stacy Jones, Chad Jackson, and the list goes on and on of African Americans who have completed degrees at the University of Alabama and are going on to be leaders and game changers in their areas of work, in their areas where they've been called to make a difference. So as we celebrate, as we salute, we also want to challenge you to continue the good work that you've started while a student here at the University of Alabama. You'll be hearing from some present and former members of the BFSA, including our president, Chad Jackson, in just a few minutes. But also, you'll get an opportunity to see what it means to be a graduate of the University of Alabama. He didn't graduate from the University of Alabama, but James Weldon Johnson, more than 100 years ago, after graduating from Atlanta University, went on to get his law degree and to become the first African American to pass the Florida State Bar. What he's most known for is, along with his brother, John, putting together the music and the lyrics for Lift Every Voice and Sing. That is our Negro National Anthem. Join me as we sing Lift Every Voice and Sing. Putting together the music and the lyrics for Lift Every Voice. Join me as we sing. Lift Every Voice and Sing. We apologize for that technical difficulty. We may have the opportunity to come back and play that at a later time. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Chad Jackson, president of the Black Faculty and Staff Association. To the university administration, faculty, staff, and parents, and most importantly, students, I would like to welcome you to NANSAPO. This ceremony honors all students of color on every graduate level. The Black faculty and staff are so proud of our graduating students and are honored to facilitate this celebration. We host this ceremony to celebrate our students of color who have achieved a great accomplishment of graduating from the University of Alabama. Given the current national and local social and cultural issues, the unique history of the university, 
and the fact that students of color were not allowed to receive an education here just over 55 years ago. In 1963, two students, James Hood and Vivian Malone, desegregated the University of Alabama in 1963. In 1965, Vivian Malone became the University of Alabama's first Black graduate. It is a great honor for any of our students of color to fulfill a degree here. Like many other African and African-American traditions, the Black faculty and staff thought it best to commemorate this accomplishment with a kente robing ceremony. We choose to call the ceremony an ansapo because it's a Ghanaian symbol that represents intelligence, patience, and integrity, which are all qualities that exemplify a graduate. We hope that all of the students recognize the continued legacy of progress that they carry with them today, tomorrow, and forever. This program was created to remind our students of color to always walk in the spirit of St. Kofa, which is the mantra of this ceremony. Remember the past and use it to change the future. We will now have remarks by the University of Alabama administrators given by University of Alabama President, Dr. Stuart Bell, Executive Vice President and Provost, Dr. Jim Dalton, and Vice President and Associate Provost for the Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. G. Christine Taylor. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us virtually today for the Nian Sapo Kente Robing Ceremony, which has been a very special event since its inception in 2016. Through the leadership of the Black Faculty and Staff Association, under President Chad Jackson, Vice President Dr. Andre Denham, and their team, we continue to demonstrate the pursuit of equity and excellence for our entire campus community. Today's robing ceremony is just one of many ways we recognize and honor African-American students who are receiving degrees from the capstone. As we commemorate the achievements of these students, the University of Alabama remains committed to affecting positive change and to fostering the important sharing of different views and perspectives. We will continue to cultivate a welcoming campus that attracts and supports a diverse faculty, staff, and student body. Students, as you prepare to graduate, please know I am very proud of your accomplishments. Through your hard-earned degree, you are now well-equipped for opportunities ahead, and you have the power to lead, serve, and give back to our communities. In fact, the catalyst for this ceremony came from a group of African-American students who wanted to provide the BFSA community with an opportunity to highlight the talents of students. They recognized the significance of graduating from Alabama. They knew, as we all know, that commencement is a major accomplishment and a stepping stone for a promising future. Students, we begin the celebration today by commemorating the culmination of your efforts and offering this ceremony as a symbol of our support. On behalf of the University of Alabama, congratulations for your outstanding achievements. You make us proud, and it will be my honor to welcome you to alumni status next weekend. Roll Tide. We will now hear from Dr. Jim Dalton. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to our graduates. I'm Jim Dalton, Executive Vice President and Provost. I'm honored to join you today for the ceremony. On behalf of the Office of Academic Affairs, I'd like to thank the BFSA for organizing this event. It's a special day for the university, especially, especially for the graduates uh, joining us here. Congratulations, you made it. It's time to celebrate all your hard work that led to this achievement and the celebration. You know, the path to graduation can be a long, steep hike, and yours has certainly been accompanied by its fair share of twists, turns, political and social unrest, and of course, the pandemic. You've stepped onto a summit, summit in your hike, so take your time and enjoy the view. As soon-to-be graduates of the University of Alabama, your future is bright, and there will be numerous other peaks along the way. We look forward to your many achievements that to come. Congratulations to all of you. I look forward to see you, seeing you for the graduation ceremonies next weekend. Roll Tide. Thank you, Dr. Dalton. We will now hear from Dr. G. Christine Taylor. 
Good afternoon to our graduates. How happy and elated we are for this day for you. You have made some impressive and outstanding accomplishments as you are now getting ready to become part of the University of Alabama alumni group. You've laid a strong foundation here and we're the better because you came, because you were engaged, because you invested not only in your academic experience, but in our campus-wide experience. You know, we have this idea, this mantra that this is a place that legends are made. And in fact, you're moving to this next level is a part of your legend making process. We hope that as you leave, that you don't go too far away. Always please stay involved with the University of Alabama. Don't forget to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion issues, whether at work, whether at home, whether in your community. And finally, live your life, live your professional life and personal life in such a way that those around you in years to come will also say, we're a better place because you came here. Congratulations and all the best to each of you in all of your endeavors. And don't forget to come back, roll tide. Thank you, Dr. Taylor for that awesome welcome. We will now introduce our speaker for today. Our speaker for the fall 2020 Nansapo roving ceremony is Ernestine Tucker. Ms. Tucker has extensive experience in health services and has served in administrative and leadership positions for a variety of healthcare providers throughout West Alabama region. She received her nursing diploma from St. Vincent School of Nursing a Bachelor of Science degree from, in Biology from Miles College and completed the OBGYN Masters of Nursing Nurse Practitioner Program at the University of Alabama School of Medicine. For over 10 years of her professional career, she served as a health educator and clinician at the University of Alabama Student Health Center. She also was the founder and clinical director of the New Women's Health Center in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. She has received over $9 million in grant funding to support a variety of health and educational initiatives. Ms. Tucker is very active in the community. She served as the former vice chairman of the Tuscaloosa City School Board for 14 years, as well as serving as a member of the Regional Perinatal Association of Advisory Committee and the West Community Action Council. She's a member of the Alabama School of Alcohol and Drug Education and Prevention, Order of Omega, Gold Key Society, National Association of Women's Health, American Academy of Nurse Practitioners, and is a former member of the National and State School Board Association. During her time at the University of Alabama, Ms. Tucker was a very active member of the Black Faculty and Staff Association and she serves as the BFSA president for several years. Ms. Tucker's tenure as BFSA president was so impactful that a BFSA Honors Day Award is named in her honor. This award is presented to sophomores with the highest academic standing, honoring the legacy of the former Black Faculty and Staff Association's president. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Ernestine Tucker. Thank you so much, Chad, for that uh, introduction. I look around and I wonder with all the great things that are being said, exactly who you're talking about. But it is my honor to be here on today. And I do want to greet all of you, and especially the honorees who are our graduates. You have made it to your destiny during one of the most challenging times in history. You've done so because you were determined and you had the support that you needed to achieve this goal. You chose to take the high road and you stayed the course. Now, the next chapter. Each of us have read an interesting book or watched a great TV show that left us wondering what the next chapter is going to be of what will happen the next time the movie is shown. We actually start to wonder what the end will be before we ever get to the middle of the book or even the middle of the movie. It is actually called anticipation or perception. 
Now, anticipation is defined as a prior action that takes into account a later action, an act of looking forward, and it is an emotion. Whereas on the other hand, perception is what you think or believe based on your mental impression. Anticipation, like perception, is not reality. What you thought life after graduation would be like may not be what you exactly experience. Now, none of us could have dreamed that things would be the way they are today. We are in the midst of a pandemic that has stolen thousands of lives and left many with lingering effects. It has impact employment, creating joblessness. Families are struggling to make ends meet, to put food on the table, and many are even homeless. Relationships are falling apart. Mental health issues are on the rise. Racial tension is at an all-time high. And this nation is riddled with violence, hate, and injustice. No one ever planned for your college year to end the way that it has. We all expected there to be an honest day or a big graduation ceremony at the end of the fourth or fifth year. Yes, after your freshman year of playing and partying, you did your part to get serious about the need to graduate. You met the requirements, and yet the reality of what is happening today was completely unexpected. And now that you're at this point, what is the next chapter going to be like? You now, graduates, have the pen in your hand, and you have a part in writing the script. In order for you to begin writing the next chapter of your life, you must be prepared. Will it be differently from what college prepared you to do by any definition? Yes, it will be. Every part of this world has been impacted by COVID-19 in ways never seen. The sense of normalcy as we know it now will not be experienced for some time to come. You must prepare for tomorrow by developing skills that will allow flexibility and willingness to learn differently from what you were taught. Expectations will be different in every area of employment. There's a good chance that you will be working virtually from home instead of going into the office each day. And that will require self-discipline, independence, and commitment. And yes, you will be on your own, but guess what? The requirements to get the job done well will not change. This chapter of your life will be filled with some uncertainties and some assurances. Some things will happen simply because they're supposed to. How and when are the questions. You will have the unique opportunity to be a part of something new, non-traditional, and the chance to create a new path forward. Get into that next chapter will require hard work and perseverance. Hard work to perfect those skills and put them into action and hard work to be above average. Perseverance is never giving up, even when it looks impossible or things are not falling in place the way you thought that they should. And always remember, it may not be easy, but it is always worth it. And there's always the next chapter. Do you wonder how the next chapter begins? How it ends? Well, it end, will it end with the vaccine that will eradicate the spread of the coronavirus? 
Will it turn the economics around for all races and cultures? Will it restore families? Will it restore jobs and put food on tables? Will it restore broken hearts and heal minds? Will it ease racial tension by addressing the issues that contribute to violence, hate, and injustice? Take courage and turn that page to the next chapter to see what your role will be. Whatever your degree, you have a role and how you fulfill it is your destiny. Arts and science majors, you must use those gifts and talents to create a difference. Engineers, you must help to put things back together and save our environment. Nurses, you must continue nurturing the sick and caring for the dying. Social workers, your job is to continue providing human services to those in need. Educators, you must ensure that no child regresses academically or suffers from the COVID-19 slide. Marketing majors, your role is to promote ways and to inform as well as enlighten. Other graduates, find your fit and write your own chapter. Graduates, I'm just like you. It took me seven years to accept the fact that I had to turn to the next chapter in my life, which meant I had to be flexible and willing at the age of 72. After working, living, and serving in the communities in Tuscaloosa for over 40 years, the time came for me to give up my home, to give up my stuff, and to move to Houston with my daughter. Uncertainties, yes, but so many assurances. There's the next chapter in all of our lives. And neither what it entails nor when it is written is known. Sometimes life will take you in a direction you never saw yourself going, but then it turns out to be the best road you have ever taken. There is one thing for sure, at each stage in life, when we begin a new chapter, we must remain open, committed, and willing to face the unknown in order for it to work to our advantage. The knowledge and skills that you have acquired at the University of Alabama may help you get there, but it is your responsibility to do what it takes to stay there, to grow and develop while you are there. If you follow the path that has been charted for your life from the day you were born, you will succeed. In closing, as you begin writing the next chapter of your life, keep in mind that you don't have to figure it out all by yourself. I do have a recommendation after you've done your part in trying to figure it all out. And here it is. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. But in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Best wishes to each of you as you walk boldly into the next chapter of your life. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Tucker, for that wonderful charge to the graduates. I'm going to ask the graduates if you would kindly unmute your microphone and let's give her a round of applause for that wonderful address. Thank you. Thank you again. Next, we will have our graduate charge. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the Kente ceremony by Ms. Makaya Gordon. Thank you. Degree candidates receive the traditional African kente stole to signify the completion of their academic journey. 
Kente is an African word for ceremonial cloth, and it was developed by the Ashanti people of Ghana. The soul visually represents the history and values of the Ghanaian people and a place of African-American ancestry. The Ashanti symbol at the top of the stole represents royalty. The red stripes symbolize the blood of those who died in a struggle for our independence to be where we are today. The gold stripe represents precious metals and royalty and prosperity. The green stripes not only stand for the rich forest, but they also symbolize life, planting, growth, harvesting, and harmony. We chose to call the Kente robing ceremony Nansepo because it is a Ghanaian symbol that means intelligence, patience, and ingenuity. In a traditional live ceremony, each candidate is robed by their parents or special person in their life. And after the student is robed, they are sent forward by a collective saying of Ashe, which is an African philosophical concept that means the power to make, hap make things happen and produce change. For today's virtual ceremony, participating graduates have submitted photos that we have compiled into a presentation slideshow. At the conclusion of the slide, the presentation show, join me as we collectively say, Ashe.
And let everyone say together, Ashe. 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 All right. Now, graduates, if you will remain unmuted and repeat after Dr. Myron Pope as he gives the graduate declaration. Dr. Pope. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon and congratulations to you again, graduates, and congratulations to your families. Please repeat after me. I have walked through the doors. I have walked, I have through, walked the through the doors. doors. I were once closed. I were once closed. I embody black excellence. I embody black excellence. I have achieved greatness. And I have achieved greatness. I will continue to succeed. I will, I will continue, continue to succeed. succeed. Throughout life. Throughout life. But remember to lift others as I climb. But remember, but remember to, to lift others, others as, as I climb. climb. Graduates, please turn and face your family, friends, and those who have supported you throughout your academic journey and repeat after me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting me. During my academic journey thus far. During my academic journey thus far. I would not be where I am today. I would not be where I am today without you. Without, without you, it takes a village to raise a child. It, it takes, takes a village to raise a child. child. And I thank you for being my village. And I thank, thank you for being my village. my village. Graduates, remember to always give back so that the next generation of graduates can look back and see you as part of their village. Congratulations again and roll tide. Thank you, Dr. Pope, for the graduate, graduate declaration. I want to uh, close the program by thanking all of the faculty and staff of the Black Faculty and Staff Association and the program committee for putting on such a powerful and impactful program today. To our graduates, we salute you. We thank you for going through trying times and coming to the conclusion of graduating. Never, feel the, never fear the future but always be terrified of regret. We will now take a moment and recapitalize on the opportunity to sing together, lift every voice and sing.
On behalf of the Black Faculty and Staff Association and our executive board, I want to take a few moments to give out a few thank yous. We want to thank the program committee persons who were responsible for putting on this event yet virtually again. Those individuals are Lisa Young, Cynthia Moore, Erica Campbell, mm -hmm. Janelle Jones, Dr. Nichelle McMullen. And we want to thank Drs. Uh, Stuart Bell, we want to thank Dr. Jim Dawson, Dr. G. Christine Taylor, and Dr. Myron Pope. We also want to thank Mrs. Ernestine Tucker for such a wonderful address to our graduates. And we want to thank each and every person and your family for joining us today. You have the program on bfsa.ua.edu. Please look and follow us again so that you can have a recording of this video, video, I'm sorry, for future use. We thank you, be safe, be well, and congratulations. This now concludes our program.
Congratulations, everyone, again. Thank you. Kiara. Hi. Hey, Dr. Harris. <laughs> how, you, how you doing? 